Holy sh big monocle cobra. Whoa, look at this thing, man. Oh, pythons, dude. Wow, guys, check that out. I'm so happy to see this. Up there with the Malayan craters being the snake responsible for the most deaths in Thailand. This is shaping up to be one hell of an evening. What's up? I'm looking hella goofy wearing this helmet and the sun's right in my eyes, but where the hell's Harry? He's in the background. We're going out to explore some places new around Pa Hin, new places in our area. Let's get to it. All right, I was driving on some really messed up roads on the bike, like you can see in the background, so I didn't film. We've arrived at the area that we're trying to check out, at the area, at the area where we're trying to check out. God, I can't speak right now. I need some water. But yeah, look at the environment here. Incredibly dry. That's dry season for you. It's like a desert and there's fresh traces of fire all around here, which it is fire season. But yeah, we're just going to check out this area, walk around late afternoon in the sunset, see if we can hear any snakes rustling in the dead leaves or find a good spot and then do some scouting when it gets dark, turn on the torches and see what we can find. Habitat's pretty nice. There's some actually surprisingly mature trees. Like we're scouting it for potential herping in the future. And uh, if we can find something today, that'd be, a, that'd be a nice bonus. But yeah, let's get to it. All right, I'm just taking my helmet off because Harry and I came up this road, uh, the wrong road, but we were, didn't mind because we were just road cruising, turned around at this dead end and I spot this off the side of the road. Big Burmese python, let's go. All right, I just took a couple phone pics and uh, immediately off the rip, similar to the last berm we found, this one has a few ticks on its head. This time it only seems like two or three really large ones. Uh, my sound is gonna go bad for a second, but there you can get a proper look. This one's a really pale berm, isn't it? Very pretty. Yeah, really beautiful one. Um, Harry, if you could handle it and stop it from going off. This, is, this one, aside from the ticks on its head, oh. Whoa, <laughs> thanks man. <laughs> he grabs it and it just starts biting my feet instantly. Look at this thing, man. Oh, pythons, dude. I was just editing uh, today, actually. I was editing the uh, video in Borneo where we got the retic and the short python. And yeah, now I can smell that video once again. Okay, we're gonna calm it down and then, oh, well, maybe. Pythons, man, so angry. Oh, here you can see it in all its glory, just uh, it's kind of tucked up. Unlike these berms, we usually get this one very, very happy to uh, sit and just be defensive versus us. It strikes a lot whenever we get close, but as long as we keep our distance, just sits here looking really pretty, looking pale in those leaves. Lovely to see a pale colored berm like this. They're usually much more dark across Thailand, honestly, especially older ones. I mean, this one is an adult, even though it's pretty skinny, which belies its size. Lengthwise, it's not actually that, that small, but yeah. It's just mile, so it's really nice just on the edge of this forest here with some like expensive ass resort thing in the background pretty typical berm area what a find this is probably going to be the only thing we see tonight but you never know we might cruise something on the way back home we were absolutely starving it's dinner time we haven't eaten yo what's up guys we're back out here and we're about to go herping Hua Hin setting, but kind of different to what you've been seeing recently. We just got our first rains of the year, at least the first rains I've seen any sign of all year. It's been dry for months here. Everything is completely dry in our area, but we're not actually going to harp around Hua Hin. We're going to go a little bit north in search of a lifer snake, one of the final lifer snakes we can find relatively near to our house. We're tracking them down this year, boys. But yeah, you see, I've got the herping attire on, looking a little bit scruffy. My electric razor is broken, so soon come, soon come. Don't worry, you're gonna have to deal with the little scruffy old crap beard for now, but it'll come through, don't worry, if I let it. Anyway, talking crap now, let's get to it. I swear, I can't be the only person that gets like a compulsive desire to go to McDonald's only when I'm herping. Like, I never touch McDonald's usually, but pre or post herping, this stuff goes crazy. <laughs> Arrived at the site like two seconds ago. Already got one snake. Down there is a big Cerberus Schneideri, I assume. Yeah, definitely Cerberus Schneideri. Was expecting to see these here. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of cats running around. But there we go, one snake off the mark. Let's see if we can find that one we're looking for. Here, yeah, we're just watching a little Cerberus going about its business. Scooting about in the mud, looking for Mud skippers, of course, this guy's favorite prey. Haven't seen anything for a while, but there's a Cerberus with a really pretty dorsal pan moving around in this like, I don't know, like concrete drainage conduit between uh, one of the salt flats and 
Kind of an interesting place to see one cruising around down here. Didn't really expect that, but back to the grind. Yeah. Holy sh big monocle cobra. Whoa. As you can see, guys, I got it by the tail and I need to catch it ASAP. Okay, just a little um, easy, gentle removing of it. I had to move some plants to get it out. And uh, here you guys have it, the most insanely docile car monocle cobra I've ever caught in the wild. You saw me get hands on with that thing. I don't think it even hissed. It just kind of sat there, let me pull back the vegetation. And wow, look at the color and the size on this, oh man. <laughs> I was thinking actually that this, I'd seen so many rats in this area and it was like it was such a good spot for having these active. I know they like coastal areas and this kind of night with this dark, dark sky due to this rain we've had. Boy, oh, hadn't seen crap for ages, but you're gonna see that on the back of its neck. Lovely golden brown monocle cobra here in the flesh. Oh, what a height find, man. What a height find. This boy is uh, not very defensive, is he? I mean, look, I'm just, hold on, come face me. Let's see how he feels. Oh, a little bit of a hood there. There we go, hold on, let me switch to my filming light. I think this light is better for handling anyway, it gives me a more wide beam. Harry's on his way. I can see my boy coming down there. He's running, he doesn't realize that it's not so important. No need to run. I, I know he's gonna be out of breath like hell, so. But yeah, let's, we can take a closer look. He's got some damage to his tail. Looks like a rat's had a good chew at that covered in some of this crap here but otherwise looking in great condition i just saw this huge snake <laughs> moving in the mud and to my luck it just swam towards me amazing all right here's another look at this beauty just uh harry made it to me and now he's got it gently held by the tail so we can look at this absolutely gentle gentle monocle cobra i've caught them at night before and believe me they can be defensive like they really can but this one not at all no hood I'm sure it would have a lovely hood marking. You can see it there. And such a big header too. It's wide. Those venom glands are packed full of some pretty, pretty powerful stuff, you know? These days, now that anti-venom is available everywhere, this is probably up there with the Malayan crate as being the snake responsible for the most deaths in Thailand. I mean, that is, stats have heavily inflated because of how widespread it is. It loves to live around like human modified areas around the agricultural lands, a lot of places where people are, so it's associated with people a lot. But, you know, snakes like this, uh, as the Thais call it, Nuhao, have a uh, fierce reputation. All right, time to let him go. Oh, he's active now, he senses that he's back where he comes from and off into this weird heathery type stuff where I probably would never see him if he wasn't just crossing this thing here. That was crazy. What a find, let's go. What is up guys? Just uh, parked outside my driveway right now and preparing for a night of herping. Right now I haven't even decided where I'm gonna go, but I think I'm gonna head to uh, the uh, Koiburi mountain range to look for Trimurosaurus Koiburi. I wanna look for some new spots. Some of our old spots have got a bit crap for uh, various reasons. And so I'm gonna find a new location where they can be found. So we've got like a 45 minute drive ahead of us. So let's get to it. Nice, big, bright orange full moon out tonight. So uh, snake activity probably isn't going to be super high, but I have found these vipers in bright moon before. So let's go see what's out. An owl chilling out there, keeping a close eye on things. Probably watching out for some snakes as well. All right, just found a way to break through from the farmlands to the forest. Once you get into the forest in this area, it's like such a dense canopy that the forest is so open and easy to traverse. Um, it's not super rocky around here, although of course you guys can see those big gray rocks. I'm looking to head up this hill until I get to like a much rockier spot. And uh, that seems to be kind of where the vipers prefer. Different habitat to where I'm used to finding them here. So uh, I'm gonna keep going and explore a bit further, see what's up. All right, got a snake after just the first couple of minutes of walking in. It's this nice big painted bronze back. Okay, now you can see him a bit more compact there. Yeah, painted bronze back. Really nice blues on this one. He's puffing up nicely, showing off that nice blue neck. You can see those uh, 
to black ventrolateral stripes. That's the real defining feature of this species and super healthy too, like incredibly like robust individual, this one. They're usually more slender, but this one's been living a very healthy diet of lizards and frogs, I would guess, around here. And yeah, good to see a snake as soon as I show up. Not getting skunked tonight, keeping my record going. What a time to be alive. All right, I'm gonna keep moving, let this one head back and uh, yeah, nice. All right, since the bronze back, I climbed this pretty steep slope, which by the way is absolutely steaming hot and drenched with sweat. But I've reached an area which looks good. I've reached the rocks, which I was hoping to find up here. And let's see if that increases my chances of finding some of the cool stuff which occurs, specifically the viper. Let's get cracking. All right, seconds after I filmed that little clip there, I've got a snake. It's not the viper. I guess it must be Davison's bridal snake. I can only see tiny bits of its coils here, but something I've actually never seen at this area before. So I'm gonna grab it and um, try and make sure it doesn't escape. Yes, I was absolutely correct. There we have it, Davison's bridal snake. First of the year and absolutely not a common species in my area, in this area. At the other site, which I've been to on uh, maybe close to 10 different occasions, never seen this one. And uh, so it's great to record it from this area. And wow, it's trying to bite. Not typical for this species. This species usually cruises around just eating gecko eggs, um, which of which there is many in this area. And uh, this is a young one, which means it's developed no brown, no yellows. Ah, something's biting me. Yeah, it's just much more of this uh, black and white coloration, which is cool. It's a really nice looking individual. I may even uh, get my camera out for this one. Cool, fine, let's go. Okay, this little inconspicuous lizard here is actually Colotes gertzai, a species I've never shown on my YouTube channel. It occurs in dry lands um, from Bangkok to Northern Thailand and even around where I live, but um, the habitat it inhabits, we rarely enter around here, you know? It's not really part of our herping style, so not one we see often. This one's just a young one. Um, adult males have this incredible blue on their neck. If we see one of those, I'll be sure to show it. But uh, yeah, species I've never shown on the channel before, looking pretty nice here. Wow, guys, I get to the rocky area and things come to life. One snake, one gertzai, and then boom. There it is, man. The first Tremusurus koiburi I've ever found in this particular section of the mountain range. Let's go. Looks like a beautiful little male too. Wow, guys, check that out. I'm so happy to see this. There's one particular area where we usually go where they're more common, I guess. But that area has got really difficult to access recently. And so I've come out here looking for new sites. And in this main mountain range, they are notoriously difficult to find. Many people have tried and failed, but my first time coming here and in no time at all, managed to turn this guy up. Just had to get to what I perceive to be good habitat. And I really do feel like I'm getting the knack of finding these guys now. This one's coiled up here in ambush. It's gotta be waiting for small geckos or frogs to run up these plants here. You know what these snakes do? They cruise around until they find a scent of their prey. And then they follow the scent until they situate themselves in a place which is perfectly aligned to catch them. So yeah, it must be sensing something around here, probably geckos, although I haven't seen too many myself tonight. But yeah, so hyped to see this one. Really beautiful individual too. I guess if you look on the side of the head, you can see that it's a male and really pronounced green on this one. Sometimes the males can have a lot more brown, but this one's in absolutely fantastic condition. Just a little guy too, not a juvenile, but uh, definitely on the smaller side for an adult. What a fine guys. I'm not gonna disturb this one at all. I'm trying to keep the population as intact here as possible because it's a place I will definitely be looking to bring people on herping tours in the future. So uh, let's just let this guy go back there. Awesome. All right, fourth snake of the night. This is a adult, wait, oh, it's hard to see now. It's going upwards. An adult uh, Davison's bridal snake. Wow, terrible filming from me there. Can't even see the snake properly. Let's get to a better vantage point. I'm zoomed in, so it's not gonna be super clear, but yeah, you guys can see it. Expert climbers, these, this guy's heading up here. You can see this one's got more of a chocolatey banded color. Not so much yellows on it, still kind of like this pale uh, creamish whitey color, but yeah, let's just watch him for a minute go up here. Not gonna grab this one, of course, no need. Already saw one tonight, and they seem to be not too uh, uncommon around here. First time I've ever got two of these in one night around Hua Hin. That's for damn sure, boys. Despite the habitat being bone dry, you'd be silly to think that there's not frogs here. Here's a nice big Polypidates megacephalus um, just chilling out on this branch. And honestly, when it rains a little bit, you see frogs everywhere here. Okay, after a Koiburi district sized gap between the last snake, typical for this area really. Boom, 
second koi brewery of the night. Let me dim my power a bit. Actually, let me switch over to this floodlight. There we go. Okay, what are we working with here? Oh, moving. In an odd position, kind of hard to... Oh, what, what am I doing? I'm disturbing. Ah, okay. Okay, this is the most we're gonna get disturbed. Just had to move that log out of the way. Oh, lovely. A little female this time. You know, in hindsight, the other one could have been a juvenile female. I didn't really take a good look. All the views I got were through my camera screen, but yeah, this one's really, really female-like. Not much of a subocular stripe with really reduced reds. That's quite typical. It's small, but uh, a lot bigger than the last one. I'll see if I can get you a view of this one. There you go. There we're working with the kind of size of it here. You can see. <laughs> Things have really come to life at this spot. I think I've found a good one. Big female up a tree, about five minutes max after the last one. Three koi burry. Woo, let's go, man, let's go. Not really gonna get any closer to this one. Maybe, maybe I'll give you a, I'll get as close as I can. Yeah, this is a, this is how I like very often see large females and when I'm telling people how to look for these I always advise them to look up rather than down. Tonight two out of three have been down which is actually abnormal. This one though up here waiting for somebody to come by again in ambush. Very cool. All right I'm just heading out of the forest now. It took me way too long to get out. It took me about like 25-30 minutes since the last snake was trying to find like an alternative exit instead of having to go back through some dense stuff to the new place and I at last I finally found like a actual path which I can follow back to the car but yeah crazy what a productive night really 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 got everything I could have hoped out of this evening consistent well seemingly consistent new spot for the pit viper and a place where other snakes occur too so yeah really really happy oh and this area I'm walking through looks good too. I'm going to switch off and start focusing. And there you have it guys. This clock is actually about eight minutes fast and I started uh, around 8 p.m. So two and a half hours herping. Extremely productive. Very happy with that. And uh, I'll catch you with whatever I get up to next. Maybe this is the end of the video. Maybe it's not. Either way, it's a good time to subscribe if you're not already. Like the video. Leave a comment telling me how much you uh, enjoy me going through the spikiest, rockiest,